In this video we are going to look at the final type of bonding that you need to know about for your GCSE exam and this is metallic bonding. Um, we've covered ionic bonding, the transfer of electrons and covalent bonding, the sharing pairs of electrons between atoms, but neither of those are able to explain how metals are held together. So before we actually look at the bonding itself, let's just remind ourselves about why um, metals actually want to do this. Why do they want to bond in the first place? And let us look at um, magnesium. Okay, magnesium is an atomic or proton number of 12. It is 12 electrons. Those electrons are arranged in shells about the nucleus. In the first shell, we have two electrons. In the second shell, we have got eight electrons. And in magnesium's outer shell, we have got the final two electrons, giving us a total of 12 electrons. We've already said that for atoms to become stable, they want to have a full or an empty outer shell. Therefore, magnesium, when you just have a large number of magnesium atoms together, they all want to somehow get rid of these two electrons here. Okay, so magnesium wants to somehow get rid of these two electrons. However, there is um, there is nowhere for them to go. It cannot pass them on to another magnesium atom. Um, there's nowhere really for them to go. So what actually happens is quite clever. Okay, and magnesium just turfs these two out, says, you can't stay here anymore, off you go. I don't really care where you end up. And these two electrons end up becoming delocalized. Okay, they have no home, if you like. They are delocalized electrons. So let's imagine we have a um, an arrangement of um, magnesium um, magnesium atoms, all of which have given um, out two electrons. We are left with a regular arrangement not of magnesium atoms anymore, but of magnesium ions. Now, in this case, every magnesium atom has given out two electrons, therefore the ions that are remaining are going to all have a charge of two plus. Since they have both, um, since they have all, sorry, um, given out or caused two electrons to become delocalized, they're all gonna have a charge of two plus. Okay, so, but where do those electrons go? Now, if you think about it, under normal circumstances, all these positive charges would simply repel each other. They, this would break apart, it would not be held together. However, the electrons that have been given out are free to move wherever they want through this structure. Okay, so every magnesium atom will have given out two electrons, which are able to flow wherever they want through the structure. So I'm just re representing my electrons here as little negative um, symbols. Okay. So these electrons can move wherever they want. So this electron could whiz around here, this electron could whiz up here if it wanted, they are free to move. So just to um, recap, we have a regular arrangement or a lattice. Oh, that's not spelt right. Regular arrangement of positive ions. You must say, positive ions or cations. Okay, you must say positive ions in your exam. Okay, do not say atoms, do not say particles, the regular arrangement of positive ions. They are surrounded by a C of delocalized electrons. So these negative electrons act as a kind of glue, a kind of a binding, if you like, that holds all these positive ions together and stops them from simply repelling each other. And this is the structure of your metal or metallic bonding. Since all metals have this same arrangement of um, a regular array of positive ions um, surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons, all metals have certain properties in common. And the first one is that they're all good conductors of electricity. Now, in order for current uh, to flow, there must be charged particles that are able to move. And in a metal, we have those. The ions themselves can't move, they're fixed in place. However, these electrons, these delocalized free electrons are able to flow wherever they want. So we already have charges that can move. Now, if I were to um, plug this, this would be a magnesium wire, but this um, wire into a 
uh, an electric circuit. And let's say we've got a direct current. So we've got a positive um, terminal and a negative terminal. These electrons are going to be flowing, or they're able to flow towards this positive side, this positive terminal. And that is what a, an electric current for a wire actually is. It is um, electrons or negative charges flowing towards a positive terminal. Therefore, all metals are good conductors. Okay, and they're good conductors of electricity for this reason. And also this makes them good conductors of heat as well. The one we need to know about is good conductors of electricity. Okay, the second property we need to know about metals is what happens if you try and change their shape. Now, if I were to try and bend this this um, this block of magnesium, um, it would actually be quite easy to do as long as it was the pure metal. Okay, so imagine I'm going to try and change the shape of this, hammer it into a different shape. Okay, I can do that relatively easily because of the way the charges are arranged in here. Okay, so if I were to change the shape of this, actually this wouldn't make the wouldn't make the structure unstable. And the reason is I still have these charged electrons, these charged particles, which are able to flow wherever they want in the structure. Whereas for an ionic compounds such as sodium chloride, if you try to hammer a, um, a large salt crystal, it would just shatter, it would smash. Um, a metal would just be able to bend because you still have these negative electrons that can flow wherever they want through the structure, which are um, helping to glue or hold these, um, these positive ions together. And the name we give to this property, being able to um, being um, able to hammer into shape easily, is having malleability or be, being malleable.